Hi friends. Uh, hello. Hi. How are you? Hope you guys are having a wonderful day today. So today we are going to be to first of all, we're in the spot. We're in the let's talk spot. It's my cozy spot. Normally I have a much better lighting setup, but I'm still unpacking for my trip. So this is what you're with right now. This is what you get. Um, so today's video, we are going to be talking about Shane Dawson's newest video, uh, which is titled The Return of Eugenia Cooney, which is currently sitting less than 24 hours. It is number one on trending and is sitting at just over 17 million views. So I'm sure by the time I upload this, it'll be significantly more. I just wanted to sit down and talk about this because after Shane posted this video, a lot of things have come up from other creators. And I thought it would be interesting for us to sit down and just have a conversation about this video, about other videos that have been made, just about everything. Um, a couple of prefaces. Some of you might know some of you might not that Shane gave did shout me out on Twitter he does follow me he knows who I am um, and I'm really gonna try to not let that influence what I'm saying but obviously like if that makes me biased to you I totally get it um, but I did like I had to like write everything down because <laughs> this was kind of a harder video to like think about um, and there's also this video is really touchy there's a lot of touchy subjects so if you are triggered by any like eating disorder stuff or anything like that don't feel like you have to watch this video. Don't trigger yourself. Take care of yourself. Um, and the other thing is, I decided when doing this video, I wanted to break things up into pros and cons. Because I do think with this video, there are a lot of pros and there are a lot of cons. So I'm gonna be doing the pros first. So just know that like this video isn't always just gonna be me praising the video. Uh, at the end, there is gonna be some cons because I do have some issues with what was said and how the video was done. Um, and I think that about covers everything I wanted to say in the beginning. So let's just to give you a breakdown really quick if for some reason you haven't watched Shane's video or whatever So Shane Dawson did a video on Eugenia Cooney. Eugenia Cooney is a pretty controversial youtuber She is known for being very skinny um, and throughout her YouTube channel This has been like an ongoing thing where people make videos being really concerned about her people are worried about her in general She gets trolled a lot like people will say horrible things to her because she is so skinny and it was pretty apparent to everyone watching her that she had an eating disorder um, and it was very apparent to everyone watching her but she would never like admit it she would never admit that there was a problem she would just say she was naturally this skinny in January of this year she posted a like try on haul and it was I watched it because at the time I was like I didn't really know who she was but I knew of her and I did watch it and it was scary she was very 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 thin she was I mean it was it was scary and she was showing signs even on video of certain things going wrong and health problems deteriorating and things like that um, and then she posted a picture on Twitter basically saying that she was going to be getting help and she was taking a step back to work on her health and I even talked about it in one of my videos I just briefly kind of said like really proud of her really hope this goes well for her whatever and I hadn't heard anything about her since until the other day Shane posted his video I think the thing about this video is this secret was like very well kept that this video was coming because I don't think anybody expected it to be about Eugenia Cooney um, he did hint earlier in the week that he was gonna be posting a video but nobody knew what it was gonna be about so the fact that it was about Eugenia was very shocking and also super interesting something I was interested in so the video is about an hour long and in it they he talks to Katie Morton who is a like youtuber she does she's a psychiatrist and she talks about mental health on YouTube and he kind of talked to her about eating disorders and things like that and we'll get into all of that in a second and then he goes to her house and he talks to her interviews her all of those things when you watch the video initially from just the video it seems like a very positive portrayal of her her life where she's at now and to be honest even with my critiques of this video this is probably one of my favorite Shane videos just because I'm happy that it was so it just felt really like well done when I first watched it um then shortly after this video came out a youtuber titled let me find her actual name and I'm gonna link all of these videos down below so you guys can go watch them if you're interested a youtuber named Jacqueline Glenn who I've never heard of before Hi, so oh. a youtuber called Jacqueline Glenn who I've never heard of before this situation but I mean there's millions of youtubers I've never heard of uh, posted a video called the return of Eugenia Cooney the real truth it's her and her three or two friends I think their name are David and Eva who also seem like youtubers so it's three youtubers and they basically go in depth 
on why the Shane documentary, like where it got it wrong. So they basically go in depth and talk about how they are the reason that Eugenia actually ended up getting help, how her mother is very controlling, how she had to be taken by like med mental health professionals. She got 5150, which is where you get taken involuntarily. Um, you're put on like a hold. You have to you have to go to treatment at that point if that happens, um, and all of those things. So they basically tell a different story that isn't so positive and isn't so what Shane project. It, it definitely shows that there's a huge possibility that Eugenia could still be in legitimate danger right now because of the influences from people like her mother and her lawyer and all of these other things. So Jacqueline brought some really interesting points. So now I kind of want to get into what I think about all this. <laughs> Let's just start, I guess, with the pros of Shane's video because there were a lot of pros. And not even just pros, but also things that like I can defend because like, he's been getting some criticism for this video. And I think there are legitimate criticisms, but I also think there are places where people aren't being entirely fair with him about it. First point I would guess I would want to make is that a lot of people are saying because of Jacqueline's video and her explaining a different side of the story, a lot of people are saying that Shane was biased in his review of things because Jacqueline exposes that Katie Morton who was the therapist that was in the video, was aware of the situation, had had correspondence with Jacqueline, had had emails with Jacqueline, and that Katie should have known and told Shane the whole story so it wasn't to be biased. To be fair to Shane, I don't think there's a lot of people who create media that aren't biased. I think every documentary you've ever watched, every like news story you've ever watched, everything you watch comes from some certain places of bias. So I don't think it's fair to hold Shane to that type of like standard necessarily, but I also, there's another point too in the cons where like you kind of do have to hold him to that standard. But I do think it's important to mention that Shane is not the only person ever who has ever made a video that has a bias to it, that has, it's, when Shane, I feel like when Shane creates these videos, he has the lens that he's looking through and the story that he is trying to tell. And whether that's the full story or not is kind of a different conversation. But I don't think it's fair that everybody usually is like, oh, well, it's biased. It's like, well, everything you watch has, I'm biased. Like everything you watch has a bias to it, okay? Um, the other thing I wanted to say is, I do think that for the most part, it did bring a positive type of attention to eating disorders. I do think having 17 million plus people watch a video about a girl who struggled and overcame, from what we can see, overcoming this really difficult thing, I do think that's a positive thing. And I do strongly appreciate the fact that Shane put all of those numbers, like the, he put the National Eating Disorder Helpline phone numbers and all of the like texting things you can do. He put all of that for the last like two minutes of the video that's all there and I love that. I love, I hate, my biggest pet peeve <laughs> is when people talk about mental health and something like this that's this serious and then don't provide the resources to actually make this be helpful. You know what I mean? So the fact that he provided resources, I give him a lot of credit. I think that was the right thing to do. And the other thing I think about Shane's video was despite what you want to, and I, I will get into the whole Jacqueline thing a little bit more, but I do think that at his heart, his true intention was to help Eugenia get back onto YouTube. I think because she was a person that was so shrouded in criticism and, you know, people just hating her and going through all of that trauma and everything and like everyone just absolutely getting on her and then her leaving all of a sudden and her getting help, I don't know if there was a fantastic way for her to just come back onto her channel without having to explain herself. I think the whole point of Shane doing this was of course in a way like he benefited from this obviously, but like in another way he was helping her, he's helping her. Like he's helping her be able to tell her story so that she can just get back on camera and start filming videos again and doesn't have to go through that whole process of having to like tell her whole story by herself. It can be intimidating. Like I know from personal experience having shared parts of my mental health journey on my channel, it's really scary to sit in front of a camera and talk about your story and like go into detail about things. That's a really scary thing to have to do by yourself. So I think he definitely with this video helped give her a platform to be able to transition back into doing YouTube and transition back into creating content. And I think that's fantastic. Something that I feel about Jacqueline's video. So just to give you my full opinion on the Jacqueline video, I believe pretty much 100% of what her and her friends were saying. Um, I don't doubt 
for a second that 99% of what they said was true. I'm pretty sure 100% of it is true, actually. Um, none of that, I don't doubt anything that they said. Their story has a very, being somebody who's training to work in a mental health field, their story has a ring of truth to it that is very true to how those types of things go down. Um, so I believe them that that's exactly what happened. However, I don't necessarily know if I believe that them putting out that video was actually beneficial. So I guess my thing was like, I think there's not really a doubt that Shane knew about all of this. But I also think with the fact that Eugenia is in very early recovery, like she's fresh out of a rehab. She's super, super into early recovery. Recovering from an eating disorder can sometimes take your entire life. Like this isn't like as simple as like getting on some medication and like then you're better. Like you can fix the chemical imbalances. Like this is like a process, it's a long process. So I do think that Shane, knowing that she was in early recovery, probably didn't think it would benefit her to have 25, 30 million people knowing all of these really in-depth, detailed things that were going on in her life, like what Jacqueline discussed in her video. Um, I don't think he thought that it would benefit her to have all of those millions and millions of people know that, you know, she was 5150 and she was taken away forcibly and, you know, her mom could be a certain way. Like, I don't think that would have benefited her early recovery, which is why I have to criticize Jacqueline's video because I don't think it's helpful to Eugenia. I get her point and I get her point in wanting to kind of say, like everything is not as perfect as Shane made it seem. However, I think Shane's point was to just kind of let her story be out there, give her a way to return to YouTube and not necessarily need to tell the full story because he didn't feel it would be beneficial to her recovery. You can tell in the video, he's like so nervous. Like he's so nervous to go meet with her. He's so nervous talking with Katie about what to say and what to do, how not to offend, because this is, whether you wanna believe it or not, this is somebody's real life and this is a very delicate situation. Somebody being in early recovery from an eating disorder is a really, really delicate time. So I think Shane erring on the side of caution was a positive thing in some ways. <laughs> We're gonna get into it. The other thing I think a lot of people might not be considering is the fact that her lawyer was there the entire time. Um, so I do think there was a legal aspect to it where I don't think Shane was allowed to maybe give the entire story. Um, I do think he knows that more is going on. I think that's why he brought up her mom like briefly. I think that's why he showed that there were like locks on every single door that she couldn't even open. I think that's why he talked about her having two different personas like one where she's really high pitched voice and one where she's more comfortable and has a lower pitch voice. I think he left those seeds to kind, and this, this could be a conspiracy. <laughs> hey, what's up you guys? Um, this could be a total conspiracy, but I think he left those seeds to kind of allow other people to later on explain more, to bring those questions up, to be like, hey, why does she seem to like be, why is her lawyer there the whole time? Like, where is her mom? What is the situation with her mom? Like, I think Shane inadvertently was trying to leave those seeds, but I think for legal reasons, because he signed on to do this project with her, I think he wasn't necessarily allowed to say everything that he wanted to say. To move on to the cons, while I do think they brought a positive attention to eating disorders, the dangers of eating disorders, what can happen to you if you have an eating disorder, where you should go if you think you're having a problem, how important it is to get help if you have a problem. I do think Eugenia's story is a lot deeper, not even in the way everyone else is saying it is, like Jacqueline and everything. I don't think eating disorders are as simple as I went to rehab for 30 days, I got out and now everything's great. I don't think that was a super honest portrayal. I think all of the stuff they did leading up to the whole story with Eugenia and I think all of the stuff they did leading up to everything was really good. And then I think the actual conversation about her specific issues were glazed over. And I, it's hard because how do you tell somebody when you, it's so hard to talk about another person's eat, like mental, mental illness. It's so hard to talk about because how am I supposed to tell her that her story doesn't add up to what normally happens? Like, how do you tell, you can't tell someone that. It's their story, it's their experience. But I do wish that maybe, and I, again, I get it that it was difficult, but I do wish that maybe Shane had pushed a little bit more on her day-to-day -day life now and what she's doing. Is she seeing a therapist now? Is she going to groups now? Like, what is she doing currently that's continuing the treatment that she got in the rehab? Because the way eating disorders work is it doesn't just end when you leave and you're like, fine. Like, like I said before, this can be a lifelong journey for a lot of people on how to control 
and manage their eating disorders. So I would have liked to hear more, and again, I get she might not have been comfortable talking about it, and that's totally fine, but I would have liked to hear more about her day-to-day -day life now and what she is currently doing to continue her treatment now, basically. I think the big question on everyone's mind right now is should Shane have made the video in the first place? I fall right in the middle on that one. So this is how I kind of see it. So if a brand reaches out to me, for example, let's throw an example out there. A brand just reached out to me to interview, to review an air fryer, okay? Put like stuff in and it air fries for you, okay? Cool little thing. And it was expensive. And they were like, do you want to review this on your channel? And I was like, hmm. I don't know. I don't really know if I have a place for it. This is what I say to every brand, by the way. Every brand that ever has reached out to me to do a video with them, I tell them this. I said, it's totally fine that you want to just send me PR. I don't need to be paid. If you're just sending me the PR, I need to have full creative control over the video. And if a brand isn't okay with that, then I don't accept it. I can't tell the whole truth on a product or I have to go down some list of talking points they want me to go down or they want creative control over my content, whatever. If that happens, I don't work with that brand. Shane, his channel is interesting because Shane isn't getting sent air fryers. Shane is and reviewing them. Shane is re reviewing influencers. These documentaries that he does, this is reviewing and showing an influencer. Like the Jeffree Star series completely turned around everyone's perception of Jeffree Star. The Jake Paul series, I feel like had the same effect. A lot of his series are reviews and showing an influencer. So kind of where I had the problem with this video was if Shane, this is, this is what he does. He reviews influencers. He tells their stories for them in a, in a great way. He's so good at it. If he wasn't able to tell Eugenia's story in, in its entirety, including her family drama, if there were so many things he wasn't allowed to bring up that a lawyer was there, like her family drama, um, all of these things, like if all of those things were off limits, should Shane still have taken the video? If they, the people People sending me the air fryer was like you have to say it does this 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 and this even if it doesn't or you have to leave out that it makes a really really loud noise even if it doesn't should I still be making that video if he was is this making sense I hope this is making sense if he was presented the opportunity to work with her but it was a list of things that he couldn't talk about, should he have still done the video? And I don't know the answer to that question. Like, I I don't know if he still should have done the video or not. Like, I can't give you a full answer. People in my, my boyfriend thinks no. My boyfriend thinks he shouldn't have done it. My boyfriend 100% is like, I don't think he should have done it. I think if he wasn't gonna like tell the whole story, there wasn't a point to it. I still see value in what he put out and this story that he is putting out right now. I see value in this being presented, but I also see issues with presenting a story to have this big happy ending when in reality Eugenia could still be in legitimate danger because she's working with her mom. And this is the thing because this goes even bigger than Shane because YouTube as itself is still a very new form of media I think in a way larger creators like Shane Dawson, Philip DeFranco, like all of these large creators are setting the precedent for what is going to happen to YouTube down the line. Their actions now are a trickle down, like it'll have a trickle down effect on the rest of our creators. Even the fact that Jacqueline, the girl who made the video about Eugenia and her friends, like whatever, felt emboldened enough to share all of this personal information about Eugenia and share all of these really crazy things that happened in her life that Eugenia probably didn't want out there. She felt emboldened to do that because of precedents other YouTubers have set over the years. Shane right now is in a position where he is setting rules. It's almost like when you think, if you think about like broadcast journalism, right? So the first like 10 years of TV, TV news. That was probably, I wasn't alive for it, but that was probably a mess. There was no precedent. There were no rules. There was nothing. You could, it was like a free for all. You could do whatever you wanted. And then like journalistic integrity was created. And now there's rules. There's things you have to follow. There's guidelines. People have guidelines they need to follow. They don't always, but they should be following. And if they don't, they aren't necessarily considered a credible news site. YouTube is kind of the same way right now. We're in this crazy, archaic almost time where it's such a new form of media that anything kind of goes. You can create a video on a person 
and only tell half the story. My question would be, is that the precedent that we want to set going forward? And I think Shane has a responsibility to like do this, you know? Shane's video at 17 million views right now in less than 24 hours probably reached more people than CNN will reach in the next two weeks. Whether he wants the, this type of power and responsibility or not, it's irrelevant at this point because he has it. He has a lot of power and a lot of responsibility. With great power comes great, I'm, just, I'm not gonna say that. But like honestly, he has a lot of power and a lot of responsibility. So the question kind of becomes, should he have made this video in the first place. I think it's an interesting conversation to have. And I don't think this is just a Shane Dawson thing. I think this is every YouTuber at the top creating these precedents right now. I think this is everyone. At the end of the day, I think this was a good video. And I think it was, it, it was well edited. I mean, it was well done as, it, as his videos always are. It was super well done. And it told a very interesting story. But I think the question would be like, is this enough? Should he have told more, told more of the story? Should he have talked about, you know, her friends and what they went through to get her help? Should he have touched more on his mom? Was he legally even allowed to? Should he have made the video with all of these restrictions being placed on him? These are all kind of questions that I don't think I personally can answer because I think they're questions that the greater YouTube community has to decide. Overall, I mean, it was a good, it was what it was. It was a good video. That's what he, that's what Shane puts out. He puts out good videos. Um, but does he need to hold himself to a higher moral standard because of his influence and because of everything that he puts out? I think that would be the question I would want to ask. Should he be holding himself to a higher standard? And I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'd like to hope so, but I also don't think you can ever, ex at the end of the day, like, there's no YouTube code of ethics. Like you could, it's just kind of, you can do whatever you want. Except for, I guess, like the rules or you get demonetized. But even then you can still post whatever you want. You'll just get demonetized. Definitely an interesting conversation I'd like to have with you guys about what the responsibility of a YouTuber actually is. Um, and also just even if things still aren't perfect with Eugenia, I am happy to just seeing her. I mean, she looked so much better. And that was such a wonderful thing to see, to see a person that at one point I was like genuine, I didn't even really know her and I was scared for her. Just seeing her was a really good thing. And I do think Shane's video served its purpose to give her a segue back into YouTube. So yeah, I think that's all I have to say about that. I'm really interested to know what you guys think about this topic, about like YouTuber accountability, Shane Dawson, all of it. Like I'm so interested to know what you guys have to say about this. This is kind of my thoughts on the whole thing. Um, and yeah. <laughs> I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please like and subscribe or just like or just subscribe or do neither. Honestly, just so happy you're watching me. Thank you so much for being here. My merch, my social media, and everything I'm wearing on my face will be linked down below. And yeah, I love you guys so, so much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!